Hello and welcome back to Stranded Deep. Today we are once again in the map editor and we are looking at our island, which is looking... Well, it's looking a little bit better now we've thrown some trees and uh, various bits and pieces all over it. The submarine does kind of look a bit more submarine-y. It doesn't look so lost in just a vast endlessness of nothing, I guess. Uh, it's quite easy to uh, to kind of get a little bit despondent when you have only sand and uh, sort of a grass texture and pretty much nothing else. But at this point in, uh, in the creation of this place, uh, we have enough stuff to really just uh, tweak the little details and various bits and pieces. Now, um, we have a few things we still need to look at. I guess most people would say, you know what? You know what? The island's done. You know, uh, the island's done. Uh, it's probably usable in the state. Just just publish it and, and be done with it. But but since when have we ever been those people? Uh, for example, this beach is just flat and there's nothing here. Uh, this is okay, but it could do some tweaks. We keep coming back to this little submarine and, and just kind of keep tweaking it. Now, um, here's a top tip. We're going to start the episode with a top tip. Uh, this lantern here, this little lamp, uh, I'm going to move that actually. And I'm going to move that here so it's actually just above the sand through observation and um, making other maps i kind of remembered something it was in the back of my head in the back of my mind and i was thinking oh you know what when have we placed something like this on rocks on a on a cliff um before sometimes it actually spawns inside it like on the beach or whatever underneath and so you get the glow from the lantern at night because these things switch on at night uh, automatically, but you can't actually um, you can't actually get to it. So I'm wondering if there's like a load order thing that happens, whether um, you want to put a load of cliffs uh, cliffs down, especially cliff six. So we go find cliff six. Oh, it's all over all over here. There we go. This big old cliff here is cliff six. Uh, if we go click on rocks, we could even just scroll down and find it in the list. Where are you, cliff six? Here you are. This one here, this big old one here, this is the one that most people will use to make caves and uh, other structures. It's great, but if you want to suddenly put a load of physics objects on top of those cliffs, um, you might find that they some of them don't render. Uh, a way of getting around that is to, I guess, put a shipwreck down and then put it on the shipwreck. That tends to work, uh, but we're not going to tempt fate. I mean, this should work. Put it on the shipwreck it should should actually work, but um, if you don't want to tempt fate then uh, you can always just put it down on the ground itself. Having said that, you can always just test the island and, and just make sure the load order is fine. Um, what I mean by load order is that uh, as you come to the island, uh, the ground is going to be rendered and then there's like an item file and I'm guessing it just reads the item sequentially and then just pops them in. So for us, we'd have all these cliffs that go in and then we'd have all the rocks and then the trees and, you know. So uh, one of the things you have to kind of keep in mind is that when you're building the island, I would put down the important stuff first, and that includes um, that includes things like sea forts. I'd probably put the sea forts down first, and then put the rocks down, only because uh, we've have have had a situation before where we've tried to put a sea fort in late in a map, and it hasn't rendered. And I, I'm I'm kind of wondering if that's a um, like not an item limit thing, just like a load order thing. Um, I might be talking completely um completely false information there but it's just a theory that i've i've been sort of playing with but we're going to click off that and we're going to go over here oh what are we going to do over here well this is one of the areas that needed a little bit tweaking as did this area here this area here and this kind of pathway in the middle so we're probably going to focus on those um yeah, I actually like this this uh, this kind of time in the game. This this point where the island has been largely created. You've got the trees in, uh, and now you've just got all the little just all the little tiny bits, all the little detail uh, pieces to kind of play around with. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of create a little uh, little lake thing. Now uh, the boys at uh, Beam Team have been uh, playing around in the experimental version as we are as we are recording. And one of the things they've done is to take out, um, not take out coconuts, but change their purpose. Because it's, uh, according to them, it's too easy for people to just um, 
exist on on coconuts only and so they're, they're trying to work out a way of uh, getting people to go fishing and to get people to um go and uh punch sharks in the face and and nom them down like an old twix i was i was just trying to think should i carry on talking about why coconuts uh, might not be a sustainable food source in the future, or should I actually say what I'm doing? I'm just reading the height from this this point here, so we can create a lake of uh, um, like a, a predetermined depth instead of punching a hole straight through to uh, Cthulhu's bedroom because we don't really want to do that. Uh, should we make it? No, we'll use a soft brush because that seems to annoy people uh, whenever I use a soft brush. That's good. Um, yeah, so they're, they're they're playing around with ideas for uh, for coconuts. So it might be that uh, coconuts being a fruit uh, make you uh, make you ill. I mean, if you try to eat nothing but coconuts, then yeah, you are going to feel very unwell. Um, but then if you try and eat any single uh, food item for any period of time, you're going to feel very unwell because you just don't get the vitamins and minerals that you need. Uh, so you might not get uh, your B vitamins, you might not get your um, vitamin C, in which case you're going to end up with uh, problems with things like scurvy, which is uh, scurvy the one with connective tissues um, degrade, uh, old wounds open up and, and various bits of pieces. It's kind of and it's an interesting disease. Not one that I would recommend getting, um, but, you know, reading up on, because it, it, it did affect sailors in times gone by, especially um, in times when things like long, longer and longer voyages were, were uh, possible, especially because ships had changed. Uh, they were, you know, uh, methods of sailing and navigating were becoming a little bit more reliable, uh, and you could stay out at sea for a lot longer. Not that people hadn't travelled vast distances by sea before, but, you know, uh, you didn't have to make landfall uh, quite so often. But it also meant that you, uh, by being on ships, you had really... Um, uh, the main challenge there was actually getting... Oh, we should change this up. Ah, there we are. That's better. Um, yeah, it was uh, preserving food. So, yeah, ship's biscuits and rum was, was were great because you could take these dry-ass biscuits and uh, have a bit of uh, rum to water them down with. But um, yeah, nutritional value. Well, you got a bit of carbs in there. Um, it's a biscuit, though. Maybe you'd eat the weevils that are eating the biscuits, but uh, I don't know. So why do we start talking about biscuits and weevils? Well, um, if we make these ponds, and I know we've got a river over here, if we make them deep enough, uh, I think fish should technically spawn in there. So if you wanted somewhere where you could uh, just kind of splish splash up to your, up to your bum in water, um a nice warm pool you can do that here that's exactly what we're uh that's exactly what the plan is so we're going to put some rocks and stuff in here just to make sure or to make it look like it, it belongs so uh the rule of everything is make sure these things look like they belong by throwing some rocks in so it looks like there's some sort of uh geological reason for uh for this pool to exist like, oh, there's a big old, big old um, sort of uh, cauldron, rock cauldron or something. And, oh, yeah, there's a bit of sand and stuff around it. You don't need to do it, but it just makes, you know, stuff like this just makes me feel better. Giving, um, giving a logical reason for uh, illogical things in a game. Oh, by the way, if you can hear um, a kind of weird harmonic in the background, yeah, it is blowing a storm outside. So, um, yeah, I found that one out. Left work. I was like... Oh, I'm going to leave work now. I will jump on the motorbike and oh my god, it's so windy. That's exactly how I sound when I'm riding a motorbike uh, through a literal... Is this shitstorm? Yeah, no, yeah, there were quite a few tractors, so uh, I would probably suggest that. Um, we're just going to put these in the ground. We only need to give a, like, a suggestion of, uh, of, of rock here, so uh, we don't need to go all the way around. One of the things, if you are going to make a pool, or anything like this, any sort of um, any place where the player can just walk in and just be like, hello, I'm walked in here. Uh, you do need a way out, uh, which is very important. If you're placing a lot of cliffs and various bits and pieces, it's uh, handy just to fill in any sort of gaps at the back of them. 
so that players don't fall down holes and get stuck. Because, well, you'll just have to restart your session at the worst. Um, well, at the best, yeah, you restart the, ses- uh, restart the session at the worst, you lose a bunch of progress. And players hate losing progress. If that's one thing I've learned, uh, players, players will put up with quite a lot of stuff. But progress and um, loot boxes, they will not put up with. Okay. No, uh, sorry. I've been, I've been going to the Battlefront. This is going to date the episode badly, but I've been going to the Battlefront 2 subreddit, or just the Battlefront subreddit. And uh, I've I just, just been enjoying the salt, really. It's, uh, that is one thing you do need in your diet, by the way. You do need salt, um, despite what people say. It's like, oh, salt is bad for you. Well, mm, lack of salt is terribly bad for you, as is lack of potassium. Uh, lack of potassium is going to stop cells communicating with each other, and then you will have a hard time. Uh, so eat them nanas, or not too many nanas, because if you eat too many nanas, uh, you get a sort of fibrosis, and then you have an even... Oh, God. I think the, the, the rule here, uh, uh, people, is everything in moderation. Where's my brush? Ooh. Okay, lads and ladies. We've got the brush. All right, wait, there's that. So I, I thought, is that that bug back again? But no. Oh, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. And if it's too small, you don't get the outline. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like that. I'm going to save real quick. It's always, always best to save. So we're going to hit resume, and then we're going to go back here. We've already selected the train height. We can... Uh, hover over an area that isn't water, just change the brush size down, and then, ah, that's better. Okay, we'll change the amount down, change the size up. So I want the, a little bit of rock to show, essentially. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of punch this out a little bit. It can be steeper on one side than the other, so I'm going to change the brush for the first time in forever, and people will be like, oh, you've changed the brush. Oh, uh, hearts. Um, I'm going to change, the, change this. So we need the cog. We need to turn the ocean off. There we go. So we just turn the ocean off, and now it's going to make it slightly easier to work. You can kind of still tell where the water is going to be uh, because the, uh, the color of the sand changes. It's very, I suppose, in a YouTube video, almost unnoticeable, but actually in the editor it's going to be fine. So um, what am I doing? Changing the size of the brush down. Boop. And then just pushing that in this is too much i want it i want it, i want the brush to move slower please move slower brush let's do this uh so the size is uh no 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 i'm down there we go oh that's better that's better that's much better that's great in fact um we can change the size up a little bit there we go there we go so it's just maximizing the size of the pool in a confined space. So it's still a very confined space. Um, I still need a way of getting around there because the player will still want a path around it. Um, but one of the things that I want is basically the rock to show and hopefully things like seaweed or maybe a, a piece of rock or something will, will spawn in there and maybe um, maybe some fish. So you can you can be in there doing your, doing your fishing. That's kind of cool. Um, because of the way the fish uh, tend to spawn is that they ignore, I think they ignore the terrain. So they will, they will just spawn in water, which is real, really handy, actually. Really handy. You can kind of exploit that as, uh, as a person building a map. So we don't really, uh, don't really need this to be too smooth or anything. The interesting thing is if you go into water, uh, you will get the blue tint happen. Whoa! Oh, well, let's do it over here. Let's do it over here. So if we go here, you can see that blue tint sort of turning on and off. It's kind of cool. That's, uh, that's part of the underwater effect. Even though the water is not rendering, it seems to be done on an altitude um, basis. So ah, that's fun. We're going to hit the soft brush and we're going to change this and just smooth that a little bit. There we go. And just smooth this out on the bottom. Change the amount up. Just turn it up. Rub the knob off. Great. It's going to be an interesting little pool, actually. It's going to be interesting little pool. Uh, the overhang there is not too, too bad. So we'll just 
do that. I'll tell you what we could do, which will be completely useless, but kind of more decorative, is use some of the small rocks. Small rock, hello, you're a small rock. Uh, let us rotate you with R. That's uh, already. Okay, let's turn the water back on. Water, water everywhere except right here. So we've got this little design thing that we've been using. Uh, I only need objects. There we are. Uh, we've got this little design thing that we've been using the three rocks to indicate a path. So let's do that here. Let's just indicate that there could be a potential reason for going in here. Uh, let us just drop that down and rotate this to a point where it looks real nice. Is that real nice? I think it was okay the way it was. All right, let's just rotate that round. It's a little tweak there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, and I'll drop that down a little bit more because the sand is going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, we're not going to get things rendering on the sand like grasses and stuff. Um, although technically, technically you can have plants on sand, uh, growing through the sand, depending on um, like your location. There's plenty of plants that actually do grow in sandy environments. Uh, we're going to hit C just to clone that. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, so marum grass grows on sand dunes. Does that grow in the soil or does that? Ooh, I'm not sure. I know it. Um, you tend to find it on sand. It's a very sharp, spiky grass. That is not the rock we're looking for, is it? Is that the rock we're looking for? It is the rock we're looking for. All right, okay. So we'll do that and that, and then we'll clone that once more. And it's not going to, the rotation of stuff's not going to really matter too much. This. Uh, so we'll do that, that, and that. Yeah, okay. Uh, rotate, rotate. So we've got a little little three rock thing, and what we'll do is we'll clone this. T, let's move this around. Yeah, I think it's marum, marum grass. It it grows. Uh, I think it grows around here actually. It is real spiky. It's one of those sort of grasses, uh, sort of seaside grasses that you do not want to be running through. It's not. Uh, it's not a little house on the prairie style thing where you're like, oh, it's a field full of... No, this stuff is spiky. It's really, uh, really interesting. Um, so we're just playing around with rocks, basically. Uh, playing around and just kind of getting uh, our rock on. Yeah, okay. So one of the things ancient peoples would have built are fishing pools. And I think... We talk, did we talk about that last episode? Um, so we've got these round houses here, uh, just in the woods. We've got this little trench thing. We've got, uh, so yeah, two, two little round houses. We could build more, but, um, partly due to the fact that we can't just clone this whole, uh, the, all these, uh, objects and just move them over. And partly because, um, I'm slightly worried about an item limit because we have used a ton of rocks. Now, whether they, uh, whether they have an effect on um, the game as we play it, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they'll be occluded by um, by the terrain and they won't render if you're not looking at them. Don't know. Um, but yeah, certainly they would have had these uh, things like this, uh, little fishing pools that they would have created to actually do fishing. Uh, do fishing. Go fishing. Um, go fish. So stuff like this would not be unusual, and there would not be unusual to find any sort of uh, evidence of structures nearby or around them. Uh, if you are creating a, an island with sort of uh, archaeological evidence, are we the only ones doing that? Hmm, that's a question. So this is, this is just going to do its own thing, I guess. Uh, we could put some, some stuff around it in terms of plants. Why don't we do that? Because the game might not do that for us. Uh, we can. Let's do. I'll tell you what, what are we going to look for? Because the immediate I was thinking, oh, throw a Nana in there. Yeah, we could. We could. A Nana would probably work quite well. Um, that's quite big, but, 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 we can put that upright. And you can press T and we can actually put it down. 
it's not going to matter too much that it's actually in a rock because you can't see that it's in a rock. It looks like it's just growing on the sand. Not a problem. In fact, we can put it down so far that it loses a lot of its altitude, a lot of its height. Not altitude, height. Two very, very different things. Uh, is that okay there? We're stuck in a tree! Camera! Please, no. Okay, right, okay. Uh, put another one there. Yeah, why not? Why not? I know, I know it's the same plant, uh, but it's got a little flower on it. In fact, it's got a little... Is that... A, that looks like a lily, you know? Uh, that looks like the same flower as an arum lily. So, that's uh, fun. Um, what about over here? we will probably leave that, actually. Throw in a nana. We could throw a nana over here, actually. Yeah, why not? Why not? Oh, because there's a nana behind it. Does that ruin our, our carefully placed plans? I'll tell you what. Let's get rid of that nana. Put one here. And the leaf in the water, I don't believe, is going to hinder anything. Um, based on the fact that at work, we, have, uh, we do actually have some ponds, and the um, plants around them do grow, so the leaves go into the water. And in fact, the birds, interestingly, will, uh, will use those to drink uh, fresh water from. Because they're well, freshwater ponds, but um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Little robins and just think, what else? What other birds we've got? We've got a lot of the tit family. Um, I know there's kind of cull tits, and uh, I think there's a few, even a few finches around. They they uh, tend to be quite small birds, and they'll they'll just sort of do their own thing. But uh, drinking. Since the, I think it's it's quite a quite a flow through the garden. So it's a stream that they've kind of landscaped a little bit, and you know we'll just put. Speaking of landscape, let's just throw some throw some stuff there. So there's, there might be a reason for coming over here. Cool. Um, you know what? You know what? We're just looking at various bits and pieces that we can kind of throw in. Oh, a ficus tree. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We we threw in a lot of ficus last episode. Okay, so this pond is looking a little bit more of a pond, which is great. Um, I just, I just want to do something with this side. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's okay the way it is. It's probably fine. Uh, I'm desperately trying not to use any of the, uh, any of the structures. You know. <gasps> hmm. I don't know. Maybe we can do another map and throw some sea forts on it and uh, be a bit more creative with them. I'd have to work out what stops them rendering, though. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Sea fort bridges, they've been fixed, and they're actually real nice now. Uh, it's a shame that we're not using those, because, you know, we could do... Oh, there's so much stuff we can do. We'll, we will throw some shipwrecks in. That'll be fine. Uh, maybe we could throw a shipwreck in... No, because it's... A f oh... I'm actually here for a reason, though. Uh, the reason is we're going to throw a door in there and just see how uh, deep this actually is. And the answer is, it's deep enough to hide a door. It's deep enough for the player to actually go into it, their their swim animation. So that's cool. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So I think what I'm going to do is leave that instead of uh, completely um, just mess around with that. Um, we have... <sighs> no. No, I still want to... I still want to throw something here. I'll tell you what, let's copy that. Uh, let's press T, let's drag you over, and let's throw you in there. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I want. Let's do that. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's that. It's, it's keeping a theme, basically. Let's, let's click off the objects. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So it's keeping a theme. It's having it's having that sort of uh, these these sort of fence post style rocks uh, either side of something. So we go through here. Uh, it begins with those fence post style. There's also a couple of post style rocks here and here, which go up here. Uh, all of this will be covered in grass. That's fine. We might put some shrubby shrubs there down when we do the uh, shrub pass. But we've, we've used that rock uh, other places as well. I think for the entrances for the houses. And for, yeah, same rock here. 
kind of the ent- uh, entrance for the paddock and either end of this sort of rubbed out wall. Uh, so there's the, the wall's been erased over time or rubbed out, but it's uh, what well, we're just kind of cruising through. There's so many objects now that we're having trouble navigating. It's brilliant. Uh, so this area here, what can we do with this? Well, it's kind of a nice border area between uh, these uh, these shallows, these swamps, and uh, what could be. I mean, we've got the stone circle there. Great. This could be farmland, though. I'm thinking of farmland. You know what we're going to do? We're going to hit save because we're going to uh, play with the old, old terrain tool. Hey, terrain tool. And we are going to hit set height. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We are going to change the amount down, size up, soft brush. Cool. Um, I'm liking this hillside here, but one of the things that, oh, that's still too fast, way too fast. Um, I just want to eat, just sort of, blah, 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 blah. I just want to get the words out. No, I just want to soften this up a little bit because if someone's going to come along here and just throw in a load of farm plots, then they are going to want it to be a little less, uh, a little less um, rough. The t- the train to be a little less rough. So not not that you would um, say, "Hey, this is a good place to build your house," or "Hey, this is a good place to throw a load of farm plots down," but it just you know, give give people options, I think. Uh, certainly ourselves options, because we're going to be using this map before too long. Um, so, we'll soften this up. That needs to come up. Yeah. So there's all the little things you can't see, all these little sort of triangly bits that you can't see. Is that one there? Ugh. Kind of, maybe. That's why we use the soften, uh, soften brush tool, or the, what is that, smooth height tool? We're just going to make up names for everything. That's because we're British and we can do that. And that's what we do. We just march into other people's country and say, no, nope, no, nope, it's not the smooth height tool anymore. It's the stuffany, woffany, um, woozle brush made of premium woozles. And everyone just goes, have you lost your mind? And you say, no, I'm British. And they go, oh, okay. So, yeah, that area there. So we've smoothed it off, and we have talked about stuff from Winnie the Pooh. Fine. We are going to do something along here. What can we do along here? That's a good question. This is a huge area. Uh, if we take a structure, or if I take this, boop. Kind of gives you an idea how big this area is. It's kind of big, and it's fairly open, and I don't really like that. Uh, it's not making me feel comfortable. I want to do something here um, in order to kind of break this all up. We've got we got a lot of this uh, cliff six kind of poking out. Nice boundary there. Um, once again, there it's to a point where it's now almost invisible. It's like, oh, that's cliff six. Yeah, but it's it's used in such a way that it's now just almost invisible. Um, you have to kind of point it out to people. And they're like, oh, I didn't realize it was there. I was stubbing my toe for no reason whatsoever. So let's do this. And um, what are we doing? Well, we're going to throw some rocks in uh, to kind of create a reason for the sudden, sudden change in geography. Is this that geology is the rocks? Geography is the landscape? I'm guessing. I can't remember. I cannot remember. Remembering things is too much. There's much too much useless information. Uh, in my brain. So, uh, yeah, we're just using these essentially as a border. Uh, we have said, hey, you know what? Hmm. I'm thinking, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what we could do? We could create a little roadway along here. How would, how would that look? How do we do it over here? Ah, oh, trees. You will be the death of us. Or maybe not. So what do we use here? We use this, 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 and this. Uh, we can clone it, and we can bring it out the ground. Oh, it's that rock. Okay. Well, we'll get rid of it. Boop, gone. Uh, we can do the same thing over here, just to keep up. So it's no, no problem using the same kind of patterns and stuff. Let's get rid of this. Yep, let's get rid of this. Make sure it is the right thing that we're getting rid of. Okay, cool. 
Cool, cool, cool. Uh, terrain, we are going to raise it up a tiny amount. Uh, we use a soft brush. We're going to change the size down, and then we're just going to raise amount is that is right that is right okay so we're just going to raise this up along here we were so careful to just kind of uh just kind of soften that terrain off and now we're undoing our careful work by brushing along here um using using the brush kind of like a glow stick just just throwing it backwards and forwards in the church of dance. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I'm going to leave a little gap there. Don't need to. Don't need to go all the way. Uh, we do kind of. I do like the the idea of a rubbed out wall. We can kind of uh, do a, go go a little on the diagonal there and soften it a bit. Is it is it going to soften or is it just going to get crushed? Let's find out. Let's find out together. Okay, so that's not too too bad. If we look at it. Um, it's not too bad. It's not too too bad. Right, okay. Fine. You do find uh especially in Iron Age, um like old Iron Age sites, you do to do tend to find kind of a lot uh kind of a lot of earthworks. That's not even English. I should stop doing these as soon as I get home from work. I should be like, no, I will not do this. I will do something else, like uh read a book or listen to a podcast or I don't know. Uh, so we're just going to take these rocks and we're going to throw them into the ground. So they're just poking out. We do need to test this at some point, just to make sure all of these really delicate little, uh, delicate little um, rock placements ha have actually taken in into uh, effect and are visible in a way that we we need them to be visible. Uh, let's copy that. Let's do that and. So it's okay copying what we've done before. I mean, there's still going to be a pleasing, um, pleasing amount of randomness to the whole affair because we we are placing these items by hand, so we're not just copying an entire wall. I know it seems a bit strange after saying, "Oh, I wish I could copy everything from the for, from the roundhouses," but you know, I guess if you built a structure out of objects, that's cool. But. Uh, but doing this, yeah, it's kind of, it is better just to do these little little placements by hand. So we're just going to have the rocks kind of peeking out. Is it going to, is it going to have that effect when it's done? Don't really know. Don't really know. Um, are people going to say, oh, oh, this is actually looks like a road. Or is this, they're just going to say, oh, it looks like an ass. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting question. That's one for the sages of the ages. Does the map look like ass? I bet Queen Victoria. I bet somebody asked Queen Victoria that. She was like, "Oh, hello, I'm Queen Victoria. We're taking over the world today," because that's what Queen Victoria did. And she was part of a society to uh, to go around eating endangered species. Uh, that's one of the things Queen Victoria did, um, along with Charles Darwin. So people would say, "Hang on a minute, Charles Darwin went around eating endangered species." Yes. They found species that were um, critically endangered, and the idea was that you had to you had to eat them before they went completely extinct. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to eat them. Uh, so there's there's some Victorian logic for you. That's a, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, Charles Darwin. He's a weird one. Did go around the world uh, cataloging animals and then uh, chowing down on them. This is like oh. There's a, there's a giant turtle here. I wonder if it tastes like chicken. Oh, it tastes like turtle. Oh, it's, it's a bit surprising, no? Yeah, that's how uh, Charles Darwin sounded. Uh, we do have uh, MP3s recorded at the time of uh, Charles Darwin. So, um, yeah, very uh, irrefutable evidence of uh, one of our uh, greatest wartime generals, uh, old old Charlie Darwin. He uh, he was responsible for um, declaring war on the moon. So I think we're still at war with the moon, technically. Um, or are we? I don't. I don't really recall. It's one of those things that you kind of slips your mind when you're part of the Great Britain um, war and uh, stupid people in Parliament. Two things that preoccupy us, uh, preoccupy our time. I was just, uh, I was watching the TV in the canteen today. 
I wasn't watching it. It just happened to be on. And they, they always put the news on for some reason, which I, I always find a little bit depressing. And I was, uh, I was looking at the TV and I was thinking, why, why is our prime minister trying to look like a microphone? I think it was the ensemble and the haircut. It was like, you, you look like a microphone. It was really weird. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> no, it's okay. We're, we're just kind of placing these rocks and we're, uh, we're rotating them. And uh, we are just kind, you know, kind of doing the old gatepost thing. It, this might work, it might not work. But if you never try, then you're never going to know if it works or not. It's a very, very simple uh, and logical reason for doing things. So we'll do this. Uh, we'll hit R. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll copy that, press T, move that over, and uh, rotate that round uh, just a little bit. There we go. Um, a little bit more? No, that's fine. Okay, cool. So we're just uh, we're using these rocks. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this one. Yes, and I'm gonna replace it with a different type of rock. And the reason for that is because these walls uh, tend to be so much larger, I don't want all of the bits that you can see looking the same. It's, it's just a kind of a preference here. So I'm going to rotate this one around and just see what we can do with it. It's going to be a little bit tricky because of the, uh, the way we have to rotate these things. Not a problem, though. Not a problem. Uh, we'll just pop that down to the ground. It does look like a big old bit of rock, that, and it is. Uh, can we get that kind of straightened up as we can? Move it this way. Ah. 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 Yeah. All right. That's fine. Um, what about? Ah. Uh, okay. I don't think we need this one. Or do we? Let's race this one. Yes. Goodbye. Uh, and try and see what we can do with this. So we're using the small rocks at the moment. Uh, not, not a problem. We're just playing around, playing around with what we've got, what the game gives us. Uh, so we've created essentially what we've done is we've created a little ridge, and then we've put some rocks in uh, to kind of give the illusion of an erased uh, ancient wall. I think these guys need to come forward a little bit just to. Uh, just to make sure that sort of ridges. And then kind of following the landscape around a little bit, but we'll just kind of allow the rocks to kind of stop. Uh, we'll have this kind of gateway thing here. I think I want, uh, I want that to go up. There we go. And I want this to come up. No, nope, I want it to go up. Red. Red is up in this term. These two are rotated the same way. So, oh, I pushed the wrong button. C is not the button I wanted. I wanted R to rotate. Uh, learning the shortcuts is a really good idea. Unless you're in Photoshop. Oh, boy. There's a lot of things about Photoshop that you have never fixed, like um, sudden bird's eye mode, which is you'll be working on a photograph and you'll be, you'll be using the clone tool, uh, which is S if you're using the shortcut. And you'll be taking a sample of an area of a photograph by pressing out. And then you'll be clicking, left mouse clicking, to um, paint that onto another area. So you've, uh, you've got a person, they've got reflections on their glasses, so you need to clean the reflections off. And um, yeah, so you're doing a lot of out, click, out, click, out, click. And suddenly, suddenly you zoom all the way out because bird's eye mode is activated, which is... Uh, which is a function that nobody ever uses. And uh, yeah, Adobe is like, oh, you want to pay thousands of pounds for your software? <laughs> We've included all these bugs, which is still around from like uh, 1997. Have fun with that, ass lords. And I'm like, you, first of all, you can't say that to people. And secondly, yeah, you get, get your shit sorted, Adobe. Or Macromedia as you... Was, oh, who owned it originally? Macromedia... Now, Micromedia used to own uh, or cre uh, do Flash. So you can thank uh, Micromedia for Flash. But then Micromedia got bought out by Adobe. But Adobe 
Adobe always had Photoshop, I think. Hmm, that's some history for you. So we've got this little wall thing here. Cool. Um, there's still plenty of space in there to put farms and uh, various bits and pieces down. But it's just adding a little divider between uh, between one area and the next. And it's just like, this is kind of weird. It's a nice little thing to explore, I guess. A little pathway there. Uh, throw, in a, throw in a bush. Why not? A uh, nice little structural element uh, for your garden. Um, so you, you might run down here and say, what's down here? So you've got your fruit shrub somewhere. Oh, there it is. Fruit shrub. And then you run down here and you're just like, oh, what's down here? Well, we've, we've got a, uh, a pond. Oh, that's nice. I'll ignore that until I'm hungry. And then I'll come back and go, oh, I don't want to swim in the sea because there's sharks and stuff. So come here. Unless it's a land shark, that's going to be a problem because I believe the sharks will ignore uh, the terrain and just you'll suddenly have shark just appear and then disappear. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that this is steep enough. Uh, this is shallow enough for the sharks not to go through. I don't really know. I don't know what the function is for sharks to be swimming under the under the uh, island. This is kind of we just put the camera accidentally at a point in the water where we're seeing not only the frequency of the waves but a pleasing randomness to the rise and fall of the water. That is pleasing. Yeah, the water tessellation is actually really well done. I, I, I've said it before, but I'll, I'll say it again. There are certain things in the game that um, the boys uh, over at Beam Team certainly need props for, and that is probably one of them. Okay, so uh, should we add a ficus tree here? No, let's not. Um, we want some shrubby shrubs. Shrubby shrubs? Uh, yeah, something that's kind of low to the ground. A small pine tree. The trouble is with the small trees, and I think I'll do another episode where we add um, stuff like the pine trees and stuff in, um, is that because they are a consumable, if you use them for like structural uh, elements, so if we put them here and go, ah, oh, that's like a pretty place for the tree to be. Um, let's do that so we don't select anything. Because I believe, well, yeah, we've we've already moved something accidentally. Yeah, that's the problem. You can accidentally move stuff uh, by dragging stuff out of the menu, and then you, because you've got an object selected. I think we've already rotated that as well. Oh, that's not unique to uh, the Stranded Deep editor, by the way. That is, uh, I've noticed that in um, many other games. In fact, other games that use the Unity engine. Uh, seem to have that kind of unique little, I don't even, even know if it's a bug, where you, you'll drag something off a menu and then suddenly something will be spinning around. I've seen it in Hearthstone. I'm wondering, um, not Hearthstone. Hearthstone is a Unity engine game. Um, Here is the Storm, another Blizzard game. I'm wondering if Here is the Storm is actually Unity as well. Uh, so we'll click off that so we haven't got an object selected. Cool. Um, and we'll just look through these plants. If you're waiting for plants, uh, 0.39 Experimental is out, but I believe the next sort of main update is going to introduce all the medicinal plants. So that's something we're waiting for. Anana's going to look real nice there. Hmm. Interesting that the Nana's are kind of low down. There is, There should be another Nana plant with a, an adult plant, um, maybe. Nana plants are one of the few plants that actually walks around. And uh, when you plant them, you do have to take that into account because they will move. Uh, so if you plant them in rows, you have to give them space to actually move. I don't know what the mechanism for that is, but it's yeah, definitely definitely a thing that happens. Oh, look at that. Ugh, it's an enormous bush. Let's do that. Let's do it. Uh, so we're going to leave some space for... I don't even need to rotate that. Uh, for sort of pop, plopping down plots and stuff. But the old, uh, old thing that we've been doing, or the whole thing that we've been doing, with the, uh, the placing of plants next to rocks, as if the seeds got trapped or whatever, um, that kind of works along here as well. So I'm going to do that a little bit. Uh, we could always just leave this kind of fairly bare, or just put some plants in here. Uh, no. Uh, let's do this, see what that looks like. I'll tell you what, we could just 
You can just go back to rocks and just grab something from here. Uh, small rock, maybe. We haven't got any mining rocks in yet. We should really do that at some point. Um, put it in this one. Rotate it till it. I'd love to know what happened in the editor to make this rock. Like. Just, uh, just in terms of not the game editor, but like a three D, three D engine. This is like, um, so I had this idea for a rock, and what I did was uh, I took the mouse and I slammed it against the table a few times and uh, added rock texture, and uh, that's that's what we got. Cool. That's how you make rock. Uh, we'll get rid of that one because it's not going to work for us. That one we already know. This one's okay. Let's get one of the bigger ones. Uh, big rock. Oh, yeah. So it's worth putting big rocks in every now and again. And the reason for that is uh, partially because it helps with occlusion and partially um, because it just helps with... Um, it, it just breaks up the sort of emptiness. Of, not emptiness, but um, if you have lots of smooth terrain, um, it kind of looks like the moon, I guess. Um, it's too sort of big and flat and barren, uh, so throwing, throwing stuff like this in gives people something to jump on because uh, anytime you put a rock down, uh, people will jump on it and uh, use it to explore. Um, kind of like, kind of like mountains. If you uh, if you put a mountain in front of someone, they will climb it. It's uh, it's just human nature. Human nature. We've got a lot of these plants. The only plants we haven't used that much of. These guys don't. We don't seem to use that that much of these guys. Um, so let's do that. Let's hit R. Let's rotate that so it's more vertical. So it's not. Uh... Ah, there we are. Okay, cool. And that's that. We don't need to put any tracks in there because it'd be a cause. Let's get rid of that. Cool. Um, because we're the only people on the island. I mean, these are these are essentially ruins that we've got. Uh, we could throw some rocks in the other side just to kind of give a give some sort of avenue style thing. Rocks, rocky rocks, 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 rocks. Where are you? Where are you? Ah, oh, we could throw the big rocks in this time. Yes, absolutely. Fine. Fine. Um, because. What might not have happened is this whole area. Oof. Camera. Uh, this whole area might not have been here when the people were here. Uh, in fact, the island might have been a lot bigger, coastal erosion and all that sort of stuff. So you've uh, you've got that to contend with. We're also going to use that uh, these rocks to kind of pinch off this very wide area. We might actually raise this terrain up a little bit as well. Uh, we don't need that many of them. We just need. There we go. Just need a couple. Uh, we could do that. Cool. So that kind of that creates a little avenue. Throw in some plants. Oh yeah, yeah, plants, 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 plants. That's a rock. This, these are plants. Okay, cool. Uh, we can throw in curas. Nope, don't want curas here, or do we? Um, no, I think this is okay. This is this is nice enough for someone to come on and explore on their own. They might might be able to do fishing and stuff in there. Uh, I think we'll just grab something, some structural plants. There we go. It's a bit like it's a bit like planning a garden. I I wonder if you could build your own garden in Stranded Deep. Your own sort of very plant limited garden, but your own garden nevertheless. There we go. Uh, something here as well, because it needs something here. There we go. That's very good. So we'll put that down so it's more of a uh, shrub. Uh, rotate it so the leaves aren't touching the rocks. So it's kind of filled in that gap nicely. And if we come down. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. It's missing something though. Uh, so we've got an area for for because um, this will be covered in grass because we'll be running on max rares. Not everyone will be running on max rares, so this is kind of what they'll see. Uh, it's worth noting that what you see in the editor is not what you see in the game uh, necessarily, depending on your uh, your specs and uh, kind of how you run the game. Um, so if you're running on laptop settings, obviously things are going to render a lot closer. 
uh, you might have trouble rendering this particular island in laptop settings. But if you're running on Ultra, then you can expect a lot more detail um, and sort of environmental effects, I guess. Ooh, what is missing here? There's something missing. Something missing. It may, it's okay. We could just leave it at this um, because this is kind of a planned area uh, that will be covered in grass for us. I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's here. Here's the problem. Just here. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Uh, okay. That's a tree. Ah. Uh. Oh, that yeah, that suddenly looks a lot better. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, definitely. Oh man, I'm I'm glad I'm glad we could get the ficus in there. Boy, <laughs> I just uh, just have to rotate that. Actually, that's uh, that's a bit awkward. Next to the other one, um, I do want the branch over the path though. So can we rotate it so these aren't touching so badly? Let's do this. Let's do that. Uh, move it slightly. Rotate it. Ugh, I'm getting all my all the fingers are in the wrong place. That's what we need to do. Uh, what am I looking at? You know, that's one thing you never. Okay, so there's there's a few people you never want to hear that phrase from. What am I looking at? Uh, one of those would be your doctor. What am I looking at here? It's an X-ray, and you've you've broken your your butt or something you've fallen off a tree or um shoot i don't know what, whatever you get up to in, in real life and they're like oh oh no uh here's your, your x-rays have come back and you, you, your butt's completely broken okay so fine um it's not quite what we want we want it to be a bit more like that let's just look up make <laughs> camera I didn't even know where we are anymore. I didn't even hit shift or anything. Uh, so we've got, I'm just just being a little bit picky about how uh, the branches and stuff. Because see, when the sun comes through these things, it's going to look real nice. Um, but I just want to be a little bit picky about how the branches uh, uh, are not touching each other. I don't want the branches touching each other. Fine. Um, I also want this kind of lowdown, so we're going to be using the door to, because we learned quickly, very quickly, that the door is quite a, a useful, um, a useful device for seeing how high everything actually needs to be. I think that'd be fine, actually. That'd be absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay. So we can get rid of the door. So we've made ourselves a little pathway uh, through here. And we kind of close it off. And we put a tree down. Um, it's kind of open this way and a little more hidden uh, in this direction. Not really a problem. It's not really a problem. I'm sure once we're in the game and we're running around, it'll be absolutely fine. Uh, we've created ourselves a little pool, a little pond. We've used three stones. Uh, it's kind of subtle. And we've dressed around the outside with some plants. But it's uh, it's very sort of um, shallow while it's a deep deep pool. It's shallow enough to get out of, so that's not a problem. And it links up nicely with this here. So if you're, if you're exploring, you might find that. You run through and you've got this area here. Uh, you can run around the outside and get to the beach. Uh, you can even get around the other side. It's slightly more awkward, but not a problem. Yeah, you've got these stones that kind of you, you might learn is, is denoting the edge of um, some, some ancient paddock or something. Got the standing stones over here, so that's not a on the shoot, and then you've got this this like little pathway. So it was nice and it was really wide and, and open, and it's still very wide, uh, but it's not nearly as open. And it kind of now ties this area in with the rest of the island. That that is, yeah, look at that. Oh, that actually works quite well. So all of this is now kind of linking up together, and that's that's kind of what we wanted to do. So we've created these tiny little vignettes. Well quite big vignettes. So we created this tree here um, with a shipwreck and then we created this like mango grove over here um, and then we created the stone circles. 
but now it's all beginning to link up properly really 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 coming together you know what i'm gonna leave it there uh i will say if you are if you're liking this uh liking this series um definitely leave a leave a like uh leave a leave a subscribe uh leave a comment or, or stuff like that if you are uh if you're queen victoria stop eating those endangered species and uh please um declare peace of the moon because you know peace in our time and all that sort of stuff and you know what i will catch you guys next time